Dear all, welcome to the playlist of Control System Engineering. In this video, I'll be discussing about time domain specification. Let's understand what do you mean by time domain specification and its importance. Why we have to study about time domain specification? In fact, the performance of system is usually evaluated in terms of time domain specification. Typically, it is applicable for linear control system. Okay, for performance analysis, we are mainly focusing on time domain. As you can observe different questionnaires like how fast it is stable to respond to the input. Another thing, how fast it is reaching to the desired output. What is the error between the desired output and the actual output once the transients die down and the steady state is achieved? You can able to follow a few more questions such as does it oscillate around the desired value? Is the output continuously increasing with time or it is bounded BIBO system, bounded input, bounded output system? And also whether our system is stable or not. So to get those answers, we require time domain specification. We are going to give the answer for the following questions. You can see the following questions. I have already, already read the following questions. The solution, how to get the solution, definitely will be getting the solution with the help of time domain specification. That is why we are mainly focusing on time domain specification. Okay, so let's understand what is time domain specification. You know, in case of inductor and capacitor, if you're talking about inductor and capacitor, inductor is mainly storing magnetic energy, where capacitor that is storing electrical energy. Especially, there is a drastic change of energy from one state to another state. At that time, you have to consider transient response or transient analysis. If it is pure resistor, no need to consider transient response. But if I talk about inductor and capacitor, you have to consider transient response. Okay, so let us consider the first point. The transient response characteristics of a control system to an unit step input is specified in terms of time domain specification. All right. What are the time domain specification? So there are majorly five time domain specifications. They are number one, delay time. It is representing by the letter TD. Next one is rise time. It is representing by TR. And we can see that peak time. It is denoting by the letter TP. And the peak overshoot, or you can call maximum overshoot. Normally it is represented by the letter MP. And finally settling time, it is denoted by the letter TS. So these are the ma main time domain specification. What are the time domain specification? You have to explain these five terminologies. Okay, so with the help of these terminologies, you can able to follow or you can able to find out the solution for the previous question. I have shown you a set of questionnaire bit early. See, these are the set of questionnaires. You can able to identify the answer. You can able to solve the answers of this questionnaire by considering the term time domain specification. That is the importance. Okay, right now we can recall the importance of time domain specification. Let's understand what do you mean by delay time, rise time, peak time, then peak overshoot and settling time. First in the foremost, let me move on to delay time. What do you mean by delay time? Let's understand the definition of delay time. It is a time required for the response to reach 50 percentage of the steady state value for the very first time. You can observe C of T means a response versus T means time. Response versus output response versus time. See, the time taken to reach the 50% of the response that is generally called as delay time. It is represented by the letter TD. Now I wanted to tell you how do you calculate or how do you evaluate delay time? Okay, you can evaluate the delay time by using a simple formula. Look at the formula here. Delay time, it is represented by the letter TD that is given by 1 plus 0 0.7 zeta whole divided by omega n. What do you mean by zeta? Zeta is nothing but it is a damping ratio. Damping ratio decides the system such as under damped system, over damped system, critically damped system, undamped system. Suppose if the value of zeta is greater than 1, it is over damped system. In case zeta equal to 1, then it is known as critically damped system. If the zeta is less than 1, you can say that it is an under damped system. Likewise, you can define the different type of system according to the value of zeta. Now, let me ask one thing. What do you mean by omega n? Omega n is nothing but natural frequency of oscillation. It is denoted by the letter omega n and the unit is radian per second. 
Okay, this is the way. How do you calculate delay time? Here you can mention the delay time. So this is the uh, lock position of the de delay time TD. Okay, TD. We can note down the formula. Let me discuss another terminology. That means another time domain specification that is called rise time. What do you mean by rise time? It is the time required for the response to rise from 0% to 100% of its final value. It is applicable for underdamped system. Please concentrate this particular diagram. Okay, so rise time is nothing but the time uh, taken to or time required to reach 0 to 100 percentage of its final value. So you can able to mention this is your uh, rise time TR. See, you can able to locate TR time taken to reach 0 percentage to 100 percentage typically for under damped system. If I talk about over damped system, it will be 0 percentage to 90 percentage. Okay, that means time required for the response to rise from 10 uh, 10 percentage to 90 percentage for the steady state value that is for applicable for over damped system if i mention about critically damped system how we can define rise time that means it is a time taken for the response to rise from 5 percentage to 95 percentage here they have mentioned as 0.95 okay that means 90 percentage okay 5 percentage to 90 percentage they have mentioned okay that is tr I'll show you one more diagram so that the concept will be very much clear. So I'm going to talk about rise time. So you can pay the attention. What is the rise time? Uh, look at the diagram. So in, in this diagram, the rise time is mentioned over here. Time required to reach the value from 0 to 100 percentage for the steady state response 0 to 100 percentage one is nothing but 100 percentage this is representing the rise time tr you can very very clearly mention okay so this is for under damped system for over damped and critically damped system it varies okay the response percentage that is getting varied okay so that is a scenario regarding rise time see 0 to 100 percentage to rise from 0 to 100 percentage that is applicable for under damped system for over damped system that is lies in between 10 percentage to 90 percentage whereas critically damped system the time taken for the response to rise from 5 percentage to 95 percentage however you can mention the value of tr in general here how do you calculate rise time yes of course we can calculate the rise time by using a simple formula tr equal to pi minus theta by omega d what do you mean by omega d omega d is nothing but damped frequency of oscillation which is expressed in terms of radian per second what do you mean by theta so theta you can calculate by using the formula tan inverse of square root of 1 minus zeta square upon zeta how do you get theta so there is a thumb rule to get the value of theta i'll show you that particular thumb rule so you can look at here so there is a right angle triangle okay here base zeta hypotenuse uh, that is 1 and height is square root of 1 minus theta square for this case how do you calculate tan theta so tan theta is nothing but opposite side divided by adjacent side what is opposite side 1 minus zeta square divided by what is adjacent side this is zeta therefore theta can be calculated by taking inverse okay tan inverse of square root of 1 minus theta square divided by zeta so this is the way how to get the value of theta it is expressed in terms of radian not in degree do remember this now i wanted to tell you one more information is there any relationship between damped frequency of oscillation and natural frequency of oscillation yes of course this is the relation which is showing the damped frequency of oscillation omega d and the natural frequency of uh, natural frequency of oscillation omega n. omega d is equal to omega n times square root of 1 minus theta square these points you have to remember. See, same thing I have written over here. So we have discussed about delay time and rise time. Now let me discuss about peak time. What do you mean by peak time? It is a time required for the response uh, to reach the peak value for the very first time. So this is the value of uh, peak. Okay, time required to reach the peak value of the response at this point. So time required, time is TP. TP means peak time. The time required to reach the peak value of the response. This is the peak value of response. So certain time it required to reach the peak value of response that is called peak time. How do you calculate peak time? 
So very simple formula. Uh, peak time TP is given by pi by omega d. So omega d can be expressed in terms of omega n, where omega n is called the natural frequency of oscillation. That means pi upon omega n into square root of 1 minus theta square. So this is the way you can able to calculate TP, peak time. So I'll be showing you one more diagram. So one more response curve I'll be showing you so that you can understand very easily. See, here you can able to calculate a peak. What is peak time? The time required to reach the peak value of response for the very first time. So this time is generally denoted by TP. TP is nothing but peak time. I hope you have understood what is peak time. And the calculation also I have mentioned, okay. Next, next time domain specification is peak overshoot or you can call maximum overshoot. It is denoted by the letter MD. What do you mean by peak overshoot? Peak overshoot MP is defined as the deviation of the response at peak time from the final value of the response. This you have to underline. It is also called as maximum overshoot. Okay, so let, let us uh, re redefine uh, the peak overshoot in this manner. It can also be defined as the ratio of maximum peak value to the final value, where the maximum peak value is measured from the final value. Okay, so peak overshoot should be as minimum as possible in a stable system. That point also you have to remember. Okay, so we have to try, we have to reduce the peak overshoot for a stable system. Now let us consider a second order system. You can able to calculate the peak overshoot. Where is the peak overshoot? So please observe here. This is your peak overshoot. It is representing by M P. Okay, so this much of uh, area you can able to measure uh, peak overshoot. It is denoted by the letter M P. How do you calculate peak overshoot? So there is a formula M P. Uh, the C of T. C means a response. Okay, C of T means output of response. C of T P minus C of infinity divided by C of infinity. If you wanted to calculate the peak response, if you wanted to calculate the maximum overshoot in percentage, you can able to multiply with 100. Then you'll be getting the peak overshoot in terms of percentage. Normally, we represent the peak overshoot or maximum overshoot in terms of percentage. So you can able to figure out what is peak overshoot. MP is denoted by the peak overshoot. So it is merely visible that this is your peak overshoot. You can able to measure. So definition, let us record the deviation of the response at peak time from the final value. So this is your uh, the peak value and this will be the final value. So that deviation is expressed in terms of peak overshoot or maximum overshoot. Is there any other formula to compute peak overshoot? So after substituting T, P, C, infinity, uh, C of infinity, you will be getting the peak overshoot. There is a formula. In the upcoming session, I am going to derive the expression for peak overshoot in a simple manner. You can uh, stay tuned my my channel and you will be getting the derivation of that particular peak overshoot. Likewise, I will be deriving uh, rise time, uh, peak time, etc. So after substituting T, P, C, infinity, I will be getting C of infinity, I will be getting the consolidated formula. MP is given by uh, e to the power minus zeta pi divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square. If you wanted to express the peak overshoot in terms of percentage, you can follow the expression e to the power minus zeta pi divided by square root of 1 minus zeta square into 100. Then you will be getting the peak overshoot in terms of percentage. Do remember these two formulas. Definitely during design, uh, this formula will really help you out. Let me discuss the last parameter regarding time domain specification. That is settling time. It is denoted by the letter TS. What do you mean by settling time? It is the time required for the response to reach the steady state and stay within the specified tolerance band around the final value. So this is the settling time. Normally the tolerance bands that is expressed in the range of 2% and 5% in general. I'm talking about in general 2% or 5% that is a specification about the tolerance band. Now can, well, let us figure out the settling time of a given second order response. Let us consider the second order response here. So please do consider the diagram. This is the second order response. You can able to see the settling time. See, so there will be a allowable tolerance or tolerance band that is expressed in terms of either 2% or 5%. So for 2% to tolerance band, you can able to finalize the settling time as 
4 divided by zeta omega n. There is a derivation that I will be preparing a separate video. And for 5% tolerance band, you can write the settling time is equal to 3 divided by zeta omega n. Okay, this is your settling time. Okay, so finally, uh, the response will be restricted. Okay, it becomes steady at this particular band. You can able to identify. So it is denoted by the letter TS, settling time. Okay, so let us uh, recall the definition once again. See, it is the time required for the response to reach the steady state and stay within the specified tolerance band. This is your specified tolerance band that is normally denoted by the 2 percentage or 5 percentage. Okay. Around the final value. Of course, this is the final value. And of course, this is the final value. Okay. One means that's a final value. See, you can able to see the final value. Around the final value, the, uh, the response will be restricted in within the specified band that is represented by settling time TS. Okay, so I have referred the textbook of control system written by A. Nagur Kani. You can also refer the same textbook. Uh, let us conclude the session. So in this session, I have discussed about the importance of time domain specification. Why we have to study or why we have to consider the time domain specification. Okay, mainly for evaluating the performance. And also I have given a set the certain set of questionnaire, you can able to find out the solution by considering time domain specification. In Viva, if such questions may be, asked, may be asked and you can able to give the proper answer, clear? And what are the time domain specification? Delay time, rise time, peak time, peak overshoot and settling time. These are the time domain specification. I have discussed the mathematical expression as well. In the upcoming session, I am going to discuss the derivation of delay time, rise time, peak time, peak overshoot and such settling time. And I have shown the particular time domain specification with the help of a second order response also. And I would like to do uh, this calculation with the help of MATLAB software or Scilab. Okay, I will try to make out the video regarding this time domain specification and I will be giving suitable example as well. Finally, thank you very much for watching this video. If you are having any queries, please put up in the comment box.